Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm taking a look at a neat little portable compressor from the shooting party. But first up, regular contributor Rich Saunders sets his sights on some very crafty corvids and succeeds in bringing a few to book. Right, well as anyone will tell you, corvids are about the most difficult of air gun quarry to target. Uh, they're really, really intelligent, have great eyesight, they're just very wary generally, and they also communicate with each other. But that's what I'm going to be doing today. Now, um, the, the, the general list was tightened up a little while ago to ensure that pests were only being shot uh, when there's a specific reason for doing it. And I think that's a good idea because just being on a list is no longer a reason to shoot something. They actually have to be doing something harmful. And when it comes to corvids, um, especially in an environment like this, there's thousands of them. Um, they're defecating on the farm equipment and around the yard, and that's obviously a slip hazard and a health hazard for the people who work here. But they're also defecating in the cattle feed, um, and that's obviously a disease risk for the cattle and also for the broader uh, food chain as well. Now, the farmer has um, tried uh, lots of non-lethal methods to try and control the, the corvids down here and there's just so many of them it's just not practical and unfortunately shooting is the only uh, method left open to him now. Now I've been down here, I've shot lots of crows down here with a shotgun but there's actually a park um, that borders onto the farm here, a public park and that restricts the directions in which you can use a shotgun and also the noise from shotguns can be off-putting for some people. So uh, I'm going to change tactic today. Now I have been down here several times with an air gun before and I've had a little bit of success um, but it's really difficult just trying to creep up on them around the, the, the yard and on the food clamps because there's so many pairs of eyes that they, that they just spot you and, and scarper off. So slight change in plan. I'm going to go into the field behind me, set up a hide and see if I can ambush them that way. Glad to put that lock down. This is a really good spot for a hide here. I've got some nice overhead cover here so the birds won't see me as they're flying over from either direction. So I'm going to set my hide up back in against the hedgerow here um, and hopefully I won't get spotted by the crows. There's no shortage of crows on this permission. Rich needs to keep out of their sight, so he's using a camouflage net to quickly create a screen to hide behind. So I got these clips on the internet, just little simple plastic clips, but they're really good for just securing the net around the poles so nothing flaps out of the way. That's the hide dressed. I haven't gone overboard because I want to get in there as quickly as I possibly can. All I've got to do now is get my bean bag in there, my trigger sticks in there and get comfortable and hope the crows turn up. You don't want to sit on any, sit on any thistles in a hide. That was unpleasant. So 
So now I'm nice and comfy in the hide. The gear that I'm using, I've lasered the distance from the hide to the top of the tree where I expect most of the shots to come at 53 meters. Now obviously I knew that it's going to be fairly long distance shots and that's in my opinion too far to, to take shots at a live quarry with a, a 12 foot pound gun. So I bought with me uh, an FAC rated Daystate Delta Wolf. It's a short barrel 35 foot pound 2.2 model um, and that will push out a, a 16 grillet grain pellet at around about 920-930 feet per second. Um, it's very very accurate, very consistent as well. Um, side lever action, 11 shot magazine. Now, um, I'm using an FAC rifle simply because behind the tree there's acres and acres and acres of safe uh, backstop. So I'm perfectly satisfied and comfortable that, um, that, this is, that there'll be safe shots to take. Now, on top of the rifle, held on with a set of Sportsmatch scope mounts, and I use Sportsmatch because they're guaranteed for life and they're made in the UK. There's an MTC King Cobra 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane scope. And I'm also using a set of trigger sticks as well to give me a nice stable platform to shoot from. Where is he on? Oh, I got flew off. Too slow on that one. Now what happens is, there's a whole long line of oak trees in front of me here and at the end of them in the yard are a couple of food clamps. One, believe it or not, contains waste bread and the other one contains waste potatoes and those get mixed in with the, with the cattle feed but that's what's attracting the corvids and they effectively line up on these trees uh, queuing up to take their turn on the food clamps. Now there's uh, a lot of crows here a lot of jackdaws and rooks as well but there are quite a few ravens as well and ravens are protected so it's very important that you understand or that you can identify the difference between them fortunately uh, ravens are much much bigger than than crows about twice the size uh, they have a different call as well uh, and in the air their their tail is is more of like a, like a fan um, than it is on a crow Well, that was a jackdaw that one and um, he was sitting facing away from me uh, so I aimed at the top of his head knowing that if it dropped the pellet dropped it would hit him in the middle of the back which gives really good access to the heart and lung area and I think that's where I hit because he went down like an absolute uh, sack of spuds
yeah, hit him with another nice heart, heart and lung shot. It's been quite a while since that one uh, for that one to come along. I've probably been sat here for a good 40 minutes for that shot. So they're clearly starting to wise up to me now. So I think I'm going to call it a day there. Go and have a pick up. I must have had 10 or 12 rooks, crows and, uh, and a couple of jackdaws as well. So uh, yeah, that's been a good session. Goes to show that this high tactic really did pay off. Rich Saunders and the Daystate Delta Wolf doing the business on the Corvids there. Next up, I'm taking a look at a brilliant compact compressor from the shooting party. Now, here's a piece of kit that's really grown in popularity over the past year or so, especially since the lockdowns that we've all been through. It's a portable compressor. Now, more and more PCP shooters want the freedom of having their own air source and having your own compressor does away with having to rely on other people for bottle filling and even means that you don't have to have your own scuba tank. Now this is the Air Force One Air Rover from the shooting party. It retails for £599 and that includes postage. The first thing to strike me about this compressor it's just how compact it is. It certainly is a Rover. It's about 30 centimetres long and weighs around 7 kilos, which makes it very portable and extremely easy to just pick up and pop into your boot. That portability and versatility is also apparent in the choice of power sources. Now, as you would expect, this compressor can run off the mains and it's supplied with a mains plug. What you also get in the kit is a set of leads that you can plug in and use to connect the Air Rover to a 12 volt car battery. And if that isn't enough versatility, you can also couple them up to the 12 volt battery from a pigeon magnet or flapper and run the compressor straight off of that. Setting up is very simple and the airline hose simply attaches to the compressor via a Foster connector. Now you'll see that there is a dry pack filtration system on here. Now this just ensures that no dirt or moisture finds its way into the internals of your air gun and therefore prevents any problems with corrosion. Now the kit actually comes supplied with spare filters and granules that you can easily replace and it's recommended that you replace those after about 50 charging cycles. You can fit the dry pack filter at either end, but it makes more sense to attach it directly to the compressor because the hose is just then a little bit more wieldy. Now, obviously you attach your filling probe at the opposite end of the hose. And that's a job that's also very easy because you've also got a foster connector at that end. And the kit even comes supplied with a threaded foster adapter to fit threaded filling probes. Incidentally, the shooting party also sells quick coupler plugs and sockets as useful extras on their website. Now, these can make life really, really much easier if you have numerous PCP air guns with different probes. If you buy a few of these and attach the probes to them, you can just quickly swap between different probes, snapping them on and off the foster connector rather than having to constantly screw and unscrew them on and off. Back to the filling, and this little unit can get you up to 300 bar if required. So, you've got the compressor plugged in and switched on at the mains, and your air gun connected. Next you need to switch on the fan, and that needs to run for a couple of minutes before you start charging. Next, tighten the bleed screw. Finger tight is absolutely fine. Now set the pressure dial to the correct value for your air gun's maximum fill and switch on the compressor. Now the compressor should automatically cut out when it reaches your set pressure. However, it is worth keeping an eye on it while it's running. Another thing that you do need to keep an eye on is the temperature gauge. Now the fan should keep it within the correct parameters, 
but if it does exceed 80 degrees C, you just need to switch it off and let it cool down for a while. In terms of how long filling actually takes, it depends on the capacity of your air gun's cylinder or bottle and its maximum fill pressure. Now, filling my S510 from 100 to 190 bar took about four minutes. Now, as I said, this compressor has an auto cutout, so it will stop when it reaches your set pressure. Once that happens, all you have to do is release the bleed to empty the hose, disconnect your gun, and you're ready to go. This really is a great piece of kit, and despite being small, it feels to be extremely solidly constructed. Now you get full backup and support from the shooting party, plus it's covered by a one year warranty. Now, most significantly, it comes with very clear instructions and all the spares that you need to keep it fully serviced and in fine working order. So, that's the Air Force One Air Rover portable air gun compressor. As I've said, it is extremely compact and easy to transport and makes light work of charging pre-charged air guns. So, if you want an affordable, reliable charging solution that frees you from having to depend on other people for bottle filling services that can be used at home and on the range, do give this one a try. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Don't miss the award-winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online. I'm afraid that's all we have time for this week, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, it's time you joined the organisation that works to promote and protect your sport.